Good morning, everybody, and welcome to part one of our series on rotted, recycled, and resurrected. I'm here today with several friends. Here, I'm here with Dr. Bill Lester, my regular co-host. He calls me that on Thursdays, so I, I get to call him that on, on my programs. And um, Karen Mojica from Mosquito Control has popped by again. Battery um, my family has a saying. My brother brought it to us when he visited South America, and we've used it ever since. We refer to mosquito visits, meaning if you're going to um, go see somebody, but it's like for a day or two from afar, really quick, or maybe even a day, it's a mosquito visit. You were there the length of time a mosquito may be there. So Karen is here for a mosquito visit. <laughs> today. Um, but Dr. Lester, do you want to say hello to everybody? Sure. Good morning, everybody. I'm just kind of helping out here today. I have kind of the easy job this morning, yes, I guess. We do. we do. And the hard job goes to my friend, veteran, master gardener, and all around good guy, Bernie Vathauer. Really smart dude, too, from the best master gardener class that was ever given in 2005. There are uh, two active members still left. I will let you guess who the second member thereof was. And, and um, Bernie um, has been, ever since 2005, every Thursday, he is at the extension office um, on in the plant clinic, the real, you know, real in-person plant plant clinic or on the telephone plant clinic. So over the past, what is that, 16 years or so, he has answered all kinds of questions. Some get routine, some challenge him. He likes the challenging ones too. He loves to learn. And in our series uh, today, we're gonna start out with um, digging into soil science. So I'm going to let Bernie take it away, um, giving us the dirt the scoop on uh, Florida dirt. <laughs> All right, thank you, Bernie. All right, this, this is one of those programs where the, the title is misleading. Uh, if, if you can envision uh, or imagine back when uh, the first Europeans came here, uh, Florida was totally overgrown. There, there were wildflowers, there were trees, uh, we had big pine forests, we had tons and tons of swamps, we had mosquitoes, we had uh, a very, very healthy ecosystem that it had existed for thousands of years and, and uh, some Indians that uh, survived very well in the wild. Uh, there were plenty of things to eat and it did great. And uh, so uh, everything was fine until we came here. So we cut down all the cypress trees and made mulch and sold it in the big box stores. And we cut down all the cedar trees and we turned it into pencils. And we cut down all the palm trees and uh, cleared them and, and made a space to build houses. And, and we drained all the swamps and we built houses. And we cut down all the pine trees and we built houses and uh, made paper. And when we got all done, we had this bare, totally useless piece of land. And then, to add insult to injury, somebody from New Jersey came down and looked at it and said, what in the heck grows in this crappy, sandy soil? And there is my introduction to uh, the uh, soil part of it. But just imagine that uh, at one time, Florida was beautiful. And now we, we need to know why uh, it isn't any better than it is. And we'll start with what is soil? You know, it's, it's the foundation of all terrestrial ecosystems. Everything that, that uh, is growing on the ground is growing in soil. And because it's always underfoot, it, it's almost entirely overlooked and it's very underappreciated. Uh, let's see. I'm not moving. Oh, okay. Sure. There we go. Didn't realize I had these little extra things plugged in. This is the first time I've actually used the uh, thing other than the... 
All right. Soil is weathered rock modified by the environment. Doesn't make any difference where you are, what kind of soil it is. It's weathered rock and it's modified by the environment. And, and as far as plants are concerned, soil provides the mechanical support and the nutrients necessary to sustain uh, the plant's life. Soil isn't dirt, that's under your fingernails or on the carpet. It's a natural resource, it's slowly renewable, it's diverse, heterogeneous, dynamic, it supports the life of microbes, plants, animals, and, and we being animals, it means that the soil is one of the basic supports for our life. It's important in the hydrological cycle and water quality. The uh, soil filters the water as it goes down into the uh, water table and uh, a lot of the things are taken out. Uh, we use it for roads and building. We use it uh, for cultural activities. We make pottery and dyes, plants. Uh, we do a lot of things we make uh, monuments. And it, it soil is basically different things to different people. And scientifically, there are 12 soil orders. Florida has seven of them. And basically all seven of those are sandy. Intasol is uh, the basic scientific soil. And that doesn't really mean much, but the state soil, <laughs> It's myaka fine sand. That, that is our term for what we find through Central Florida. There's a million and a half acres in Central Florida of this particular sand. So that, that is our basic, what you're gonna grow your plants on if you're in Central Florida. If you're in Southern Florida, you've got a totally different soil. If you're in Northern Florida, you have a totally different soil. Uh, the uh, myaka sand has three basic layers and, and the layers in soil are called horizons. And the, the, the first horizon is a dark gray soil and it's usually uh, four to, to 10 inches, uh, averaging about six inches thick. Then there's a, a light gray area that uh, normally goes down to about 20 inches and then below that is an orange or yellow colored area and that completes uh, myaka uh, fine sand that that is by law your state soil and if you're in central florida that's what we have let's see one too many if you're in the midwest the absolute perfect soil for a farmer is 50 percent dirt 25% air and 25% water. That, that particular formula actually grows more plants, more corn, more soybeans, more wheat uh, than you can imagine. We are uh, blessed to have that. Unfortunately, it's in the Midwest. We do not have it in Florida. And because we don't have it in Florida, we don't grow soybeans and, and wheat and, and corn and things in any great quantity in Florida. It just isn't practical. But that's, that's what you would consider a perfect soil. Soil texture is, is determined by three physical size particles. Uh, the sand particle is the largest, then the silt particles, and then uh, the clay and, and the picture shows the relative sizes. Uh, if a sand particle was the size of a basketball, the uh, silt particle would be the size of a tennis ball and the uh, clay particle would be just a little tiny dot. So uh, pretty small, but that, that is the soil texture of all soils. And the amount of that determines how the soil feels, if, if you pick it up and, and uh, it feels really gritty, it's got a lot of sand. If you uh, rub it in your hand and, and it, it's smooth, it's probably got a lot of silt. And if it's sticky and, and very slick, uh, it's got a lot of clay. You're not gonna find much clay uh, in our soil. So 
The local soil has a majority of sand, a little silt, and a little clay. And other than that, there isn't much else. So that's a kind of an unusual thing, but that is the characteristic of, of our uh, soil. Uh, remember, we have done everything we could to remove all the, the other things that would exist. And uh, we've done a very successful job. Uh, so now we're gonna talk about what the plants need in the soil. And we have to remember, plants are living organiza organisms that make their own food. We do not feed plants. I know you've seen all these commercials that say feed your lawn, uh, feed your trees, whatever. You can't do that. Plants make their own food. That, that's a very important thing to remember. So with that thought in mind, what do plants require then to make their own food? Well, they need sunlight, they need water, they need oxygen, and the oxygen needs to be in the soil. The funny thing about it is the uh, roots pick up oxygen, the uh, leaves pick up carbon dioxide, the roots also pick up minerals, and they also need the correct pH in order to be able to do those things. So, important thing we're gonna discuss many times, right plant, right place. If, if you don't have the things that your particular plant wants and you put it there, it's not going to survive. So uh, this goes back to what Lily preaches, right plant, right place, and it is so absolute. If you plant things where they shouldn't be, they do not do well. What do we want in our soil? We want some water, we want some nutrients, we want air, we want microbes, and we want organic material. The water is pretty obvious. The plants need the water or uh, they dry out and die. They need the nutrients because they have to have something to uh, produce the uh, plant from. Uh, air, they use the carbon dioxide out of the air. Uh, microbes are, are an interesting thing. If, if you don't have enough microbes, the, the root structure for many plants can't adequately pick up uh, the nutrients. So, so microbes play a very important part in organic material. And organic material doesn't really do much for the plant itself. The plants are not big on, on absorbing uh, organic material, but organic material binds the soil together so that everything else stays where it's supposed to be and the plants can get to it. If we don't have enough nutrients, the, the plants yellow out, don't do well, and, and uh, tend to, to croak. If we've got too many nutrients, uh, we, we develop growth problems. Uh, sometimes the uh, extra nutrients poison the plant. Uh, a boron in, in uh, certain situations in palm trees, for instance, if you get too much boron, uh, they, they do bad things. Uh, if you get too much nitrogen and not enough other things, you get a great big beautiful root or a leaf structure and not enough roots to support it and, and the plants become unhealthy. So the essential nutrients are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen that the plant gets from the air and the water. The micronutrients, the, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which uh, are, those are macronutrients. Macronutrients uh, are required in, in some quantity, but not uh, as much as the, the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And, and the nitrogen is usually uh, from uh, the soil and the roots picking it up. Uh, the phosphorus comes from the soil. Potassium comes from the soil. We've got some secondary macros that the uh, sulfur, calcium, and magnesium. Those aren't normally a problem here. We, we usually have those. The micronutrients, uh, these are the little guys that uh, because our soil is nothing but sand and has, has been leached for so long, uh, oftentimes we'll be short some of these. Uh, the, the 
small numbers that, that are required may not even exist at all. So uh, they, they need to be there, but uh, if you, if you uh, have any, just even a trace, the plant will probably be okay. And then the beneficials, the cobalt, sodium, and, and silicon, uh, plants are going to be happy to get those. Uh, they won't die if they aren't there, but uh, they do better if they are. So that covers pretty much what the, the plant actually needs. How does it get in? In sandy soil, the uh, nutrients all tend to go straight down. The uh, tree on the, the left is an example of a tree in, in uh, Indiana, for instance. Um, you apply some fertilizer or something on the ground, uh, it, it makes a big bubble and the tree gets to absorb it. The, the tree on the right is a tree in, in Florida and, and the absorption area is really small. If, if you use tree spikes to fertilize that tree, they work great in, in the northern areas, but in our soil, if the root isn't immediately under the spike, the nutrients from the spike do nothing but go straight to the water system and never help the plant at all. So if you want to uh, fertilize uh, something here, you need to apply the fertilizer uh, where the roots are going to be and, and uh, avoid tree spikes or fertilizer spikes because in sandy soil, they don't work. What's in our soil? Well, that's, that's a, an interesting thing. We've got particles, we've got some animals, we've got organic material, uh, chemicals, trash, and, and there's some miscellaneous living things. These are things that for the most part, we don't really pay much attention to because we're so busy looking at the uh, sand, we miss everything else. So under the, the particles, we have uh, sand, silt, clay, uh, little things like the, the grit from your roofing is, is there. Um, if you're coastal, there, there are some salt particles in, in your soil. Uh, you live next to a highway, uh, the old car exhaust dumped a bunch of lead along the road. So uh, you can have a lot of things that are particles that aren't going to do much for the plants. Animals, uh, we've got gopher tortoises, love those little guys. They're, they're uh, pretty harmless. About the only thing that uh, is wrong with a gopher tortoise is if you disturb it and pick it up, which is against the law, it's going to spray you. So. Uh, they, they don't have real good control uh, when you pick them up. Uh, we have pocket gophers, which are annoying. They make little hills in your uh, yard. We've got moles that uh, are also annoying. They make little tunnels. And armadillos, which uh, just dig a big round hole. And, and it seems like they always put the hole where it, it is the most offensive to you. Uh, there are other animals that, that could be here, but these are in the soil. Uh, the, the rest are, for the most part, on the soil. There's, there's some organic material in the, the soil now. There's plant roots, and uh, if you've got a dead tree and it lays there long enough, it becomes part of the soil. Uh, animal feces, uh, when the birds fly by, they, they do tend to add a little organic matter to your yard. If you don't bag your grass uh, when you mow it, uh, it adds some organic material. Uh, there's various other plant matter. Uh, we've got some seeds, we've got spores, we've got pollen. Um, a lot of these things are, are moved by the wind. Uh, the, the amount of material that's going to be uh, in your, your yard as far as organic material, uh, that over time, uh, this material tends to uh, oxidize and disappear. So organic material is constantly changing. Uh, it does not survive well in, in Florida soil and will not be there for very long. 
chemicals. Um, if, if you're in Citrus County, there's actually some uh, uh, power plant ash that uh, we don't seem to have that now. They've, they've worked very, very diligently to get rid of it. The mosquito uh, truck goes by and sprays and you end up with a little chemical on your yard. Uh, herbicides and insecticides, those are things that, that people put on their yard whether they need them or not. And, and they contribute to the chemical buildup. Uh, fertilizer is, is definitely a chemical. It's a, it's a, a bunch of nutrients for a plant, but uh, it, it otherwise is nothing but uh, maybe 10 or 20 different chemicals to give them the, the formula that they want for particular plants. And then there's some chemicals that are put out by plants, allelopathic plants, that tend to kill off anything that, that wants to move into the area. There's some, some pretty sneaky plants out there. Mother Nature has come up with a way for uh, some plants to really take care of themselves. They, they move into an area, put a little chemical down that, that stops any other plant from competing with them, and it's there. It's just like your neighbor that uh, thinks he owns the entire community. So, and they do, they, they, they do control things. Uh, you know, your front yard, when they built the house, they buried the construction materials. The early residents of Florida just dug holes and threw the trash in. Uh, there's old tires buried around. Uh, there's, there's household trash that uh, the, the truck goes by and, and picks up the, the big drum and, and dumps it in the, the truck and, and two or three little pieces blow off somewhere. And, and eventually all that stuff ends up in your yard. And uh, we, we now have trash in the soil. So uh, miscellaneous living things. Everybody knows that we've got ants in Florida. Well, there, there's a, a lot of bees, the, the solitary bees that live in the soil. And you, you see these little mounds uh, in, in the bare sand. And uh, what you don't realize is a lot of those are bees or, or some wasps. And uh, they're, they're actually not damaging anything. Uh, usually the first rain will get rid of the little mounds, but uh, it, it's kind of surprising you'll go out. Uh, I'll, I'll go out one morning, our driveway is, is a sandy driveway, and I'll have 200 of these little mounds and they're from bees. They they came in, laid their uh, uh, egg in in the hole with the, an insect to, to feed the egg when it hatches, and uh, it's just nature's way of doing things. Termites. Everybody knows we've got termites. Well, they're just sitting there, living in the soil, doing their thing, waiting for a piece of wood to happen to come by, or if it doesn't come by, they'll get up. They're not lazy, they're ambitious enough to go find your house and they'll eat it, they don't care. We've got some grubs, the uh, little black beetles that you see walking around occasionally started out as a grub in your, uh, in your yard. If you've got enough organic material, we've got worms. And uh, if you're very unfortunate, you've got nematodes. And my property is an old orange grove and it's loaded with them. If, if, uh, they are a, a little tiny worm-like creature that uh, injects a stylus into the plant's roots, sucks all the juices out of the roots, kills the plant eventually. And you start out, you plant something and, and it does really great the first year. The second year, the neem toads have got it, it doesn't do anything. And then from then on, it just deteriorates doesn't die, but it never survives with any strength at all. Uh, good sign of nematodes, it depends on where you are, uh, and there is nothing available for the homeowners that's effective to get rid of. So if you have that problem, you have that problem. Uh, we have bacteria in, in the soil, the uh, nitrogen fixing bacteria, which are very important because the the nitrogen in the air is not available to the plants as nitrogen. You need something to convert it into a form the plants can use. And bless their hearts, the little bacteria guys 
are really good at it and and plants really depend on that happening that that is one of the major sources of nitrogen for a lot of the plants uh, there are miscellaneous plant growth uh, promoting bacteria uh, there are good guys you want those and there's some pathogens uh, there's some bacteria that actually damage the plants or that uh, are not good for people but for the most part uh, they're they are ways superseded by the good guys so i don't worry about the uh, bacteria pathogens usually if you have those that you introduced and when you added another plant and then the fungi uh, the mycorrhizal fungi that uh, are important in a lot of trees especially that they, they, they do some interesting things that the, the tree roots tend to grow together and this little fungus uh, attaches into the roots and ties the roots together. The, the trees can uh, let each other know what's going on because the, the root structure has added uh, a line of communication. So if, if one of the trees gets attacked, uh, the, the rest of the trees can, can find out, oh, there's a, a bug of some type and if they have the ability to produce a, uh, a chemical that fights off those bugs that wards them off, uh, they all know to start producing them. There's the uh, saprophytic fungi. Those are important. If it wasn't for them, we'd be three feet deep in, in dead plants and dead trees, and uh, there wouldn't be any place for anybody to walk around. So. We're, we're really thankful that we have the saprophytic uh, guys in our soil. And then there's some pathogenic funguses. And uh, there again, they represent a very small number of what's there and generally are no problem for us. So where should I start to improve my soil? Man, that is the easiest one yet. The soil test. Uh, how can you improve something if you don't know where you're starting from? You know, uh, and the soil test is, is something that uh, you can get a uh, kit from your local uh, extension office, uh, which is nothing but a form and, and a little bag. You, you fill out the form, uh, you put a soil sample in the little bag, you send it to the university uh, along with a check for a I think it's ten dollars. They have got one of the neatest little machines. They analyze everything that's in your soil. They send back and and tell you all the nutrients. They do not analyze for nitrogen because the nitrogen content varies constantly. They do not analyze for organic material or insects or pests or anything else. They only tell you the nutrients. So the, the soil test is where you start. Very, very important. The uh, soil test tells you what the pH is. And pH is one of those things that is very, very difficult for people to understand. And it, it is one of the most important things going. The uh, Plants all have a specific range of pH that they're happy at. And if, if you have uh, a, a five pH, five is very acid. And there are plants that don't like that. And if you have an eight pH, eight is, is very basic, uh, very alkaline. And for instance, bahia grass, it's not going to grow in a pasture that, that's 8.2 pH. It's going to be very, very unhappy if it grows at all. It, it's just not going to do its thing well. So you, you need to know what the pH is. And now here is a real good place for right plant, right place. You, you, if you buy plants, and, and you have the wrong pH, the plants will not do well if everything else is right. And the only way to know what the pH is, is to do a soil test. So right plant, right place, pH is really, really critical. 
if, if the pH is, is out of range and, and the happy range uh, for most plants is between six and seven. Uh, the, the best mineral in uptake uh, occurs around six to seven, depends on the plant again. Uh, when the pH is near the extremes, uh, most plants cannot get the nutrients they need. Uh, very, very, very difficult to change the pH in soil. Uh, you can do it for a short period of time. If you're vegetable gardening, uh, it, it's pretty easy uh, to change the pH for a vegetable garden because you're not going to do it for any length of time. Four or five months of the, and uh, you're going to replant and do something else. So for four or five months, you can change the pH. For long term, uh, it's almost impossible. The, the, the soil has uh, what's known as buffering ability. So you, you attempt to change it and it puts itself right back to where it was. And, and it's it'll fight you for years trying to change it to them. The, the takeaway message here is avoid plants that are intolerant of your pH. You need to know your pH. Now the next thing that uh, needs to be done to the soil to improve it is to add organic material. And organic material, like I said, does not show up on a soil test. Uh, you can use compost, you can use mulch, you can use manure, uh, you can use the uh, sewer sludge like um, uh, malorganite. The, the very best product there is, is compost. And uh, our uh, dump, our people out at the uh, landfill are going into the compost business. So uh, I assume that at some point uh, you'll be able to compost from the uh, uh, landfill. Now, the, the, the thing about organic material in the soil is remember that everything that goes into the, the sand goes straight down when it rains. Well, if, if you put compost in, compost has got some bigger particles. It, it doesn't wash through very fast, but it electrically grabs hold of all those little chemicals, all those nutrients that you want to hang on to so your plant can produce its own food. So using compost uh, is, is the preferred thing. Mulch eventually deteriorates and becomes compost. So mulching is a, is a great thing to do if you don't overdo it. If, if you take and pile and mulch up uh, eight inches up on the trunk of a, a tree, that's called volcano uh, mulching. And it, the problem is the tree thinks that it's now eight inches deeper into the ground. Uh, it tries to move its roots higher up. It, it, it's getting smothered. It's not very happy. Uh, volcano mulching is a big mistake. Uh, if you're going to mulch, an uh, inch and a half, two inches high is, is the most you want. Uh, and manures work pretty good as, as organic material. Uh, they they tell, help hold all these things, but you have to be careful in that some manures uh, are damaging to the plants if they haven't aged for quite a while. So. Uh, and some manures also introduce uh, diseases if you're putting it into a vegetable garden. So uh, I would not recommend really using manure in a, in a vegetable garden. Uh, it would work good in a uh, uh, landscaping bed. Uh, it would be fine. The only thing is, like I say, it needs to be old enough that it's not a problem. The uh, fertilizing, in, uh, and I, I need to point out that fertilizing your lawn in Hernando County between January 1st and the end of March is against the uh, county ordinance. So you, you, for three months, you cannot fertilize your uh, lawn. And the reason is the, the grass isn't actively growing. It won't absorb it all that fertilizer goes straight into the ground. So when you do a soil test, they give you recommendations 
uh, on on fertilizing and and you should fertilize within their recommendations if if they say that yeah, you have tremendous amount of phosphorus and you don't need to add any if you add more it's going to just go into the water system well fertilizer uh, is a serious problem with uh, algae growing in the, the rivers and, and uh, it, it is one of those things that uh, in Florida we have enough uh, phosphorus that most of the time you will not need it for anything uh, there are some exceptions if you're growing uh, heavily fruiting plants or uh, heavily flowering plants, uh, you might need some phosphorus, but for most things you don't. Uh, also, if you leave the grass clippings on your lawn, uh, the, the grass clippings are during a period of the year uh, just about as good as one fertilizer application. So. Fertilizer is, is one of those things that everybody thinks of a little is good, maybe a little more is, is even better. And, and a lot of guys tend to overdo things. Uh, you really don't want to do that. It, it's pretty much a waste of money to fertilize more than is necessary. And if you don't fertilize, most plants will survive. Uh, if you fertilize incorrectly, plants will, will die. And, and a real great example of fertilizer killing plants is palm trees. Palm trees are very expensive. And yet people put lawn fertilizer around palm trees. Uh, it's a real high nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, it causes the uh, palms to go into grow mode. Uh, they run out of potassium really quick. Uh, it's damaging to be in high grow mode and not have any potassium. They, they develop potassium deficiency and, and they start turning yellow, they, uh, they decline. Uh, you know, if, if, if you spend a lot of money for a tree and, and you actually put something on it that kills it, shame on you. That, that just doesn't make sense at all. Palm trees are, are really funny. If you didn't fertilize it at all, uh, they, they have a, a growth habit where they take all the nutrients out of the, the very bottom set of leaves and put it into the new growth. And the bottom set of leaves turn brown. And you shouldn't take the, the brown leaves off until they're totally brown because they are actually moving nutrients into the new growth. So uh, very important, protect your trees, uh, fertilize within the uh, recommendation. The recommendation comes from the soil test uh, when you're putting plants in, you want the right plant in the right place. Let's see. Uh, and, and one other thing here about the uh, soil. If, if you have really poor soil, uh, you're, you're one of the people sitting out in uh, uh, the western part of Hernando County and, and it's just about all sugar sand. You do a lot of work, you put in some organic material, you know, make the soil a little better. Might help to add some microbes. They actually sell microbes uh, to put in the soil. And, and the, the microbes are very beneficial in that they uh, take and, and dissolve the uh, minerals that are there and, and turn them into a, a type of product that the plant roots can easily absorb. I mean, obviously, the, if, if you put down a, uh, a rock that is full of magnesium, although the magnesium is there, it's not in a form that the plant can use. Well, the microbes put it in the plant uh, operable form. Uh, if, if you had plants growing on the, the property for a long period of time, it's not a problem. If you have new growth, uh, they've just finished, uh, with your property. Uh, they, they've taken all the topsoil out of your entire uh, subdivision that you're in. They put down this yellow soil, this topsoil, which has nothing of any value in it, and you need to uh, do some improvements, put down some compost, and maybe some microbes. So with that, uh, 
Oh, if you're planning on doing gardening, be sure you get a copy of the Florida Vegetable Gardening Guide. It's free from the University of Florida uh, IFAS website. Uh, it's a great publication. It tells you when things need to be planted. And if you move here from up north, uh, things are, are planted in Florida two to three months ahead of time of when you did it up north. So if, if you put tomatoes in in May, you're not going to get a tomato crop uh, because the first of June, the, the plants are going to uh, despise the heat and, and the first big rainfall that comes along, the plants are going to go down on the ground. They're going to be all done and you never had them in the ground long enough to get a crop. So with this vegetable guide, um, it tells you what grows here, what uh, time to plant it and uh, time to harvest. It's a, it's a good good piece of information and like I say it's free so uh, that information is there for you to copy if you will so with that okay thank you yes thank you very much Bernie that was fantastic now everyone can understand why I spent the past 16 years trying to hang out with Bernie as much as possible because you know he's a really smart dude and I do learn a lot from him I learned from this presentation as well. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat and our panel of experts will be <laughs> glad to help you with it. Um, Bernie, I do have a couple of questions. Well, I know you said in the beginning, I just want to clarify, basically, um, you know, and when Ponce de Leon came, you know, everything was, was the land of flowers. So all the plants that generally fed the soil over the past, what, 700 years or so, we have taken them away and therefore, you know, the, partly why our soil is struggling. Is that um, what you were getting at as well? That is correct. Basically, our native soil no longer exists. There, there is almost no place left in the state where there's native soil. So, uh, the, the native plants are not even happy here like they yeah. should be. We, we have really trashed a, an entire state. Mm. And I guess the other question I have, um, you kind of touched uh, at the end on lawns. Um, um, a lot of people move here and they want their lawns or their HOA says they have to have their lawns. And they look at this and they're thinking, I'm putting this crabgrass, which you are calling a lawn, <laughs> on top of this sand. Therefore, I need to water it as much as possible. What do you say about that? Well, the, the problem with watering, uh, when you put down sod, for instance, the sod has no roots and you need to water it very frequently. Uh, I think that tends to give people the impression that it needs to be watered frequently, continuously. And that's not really true. For the most part, Lawns in Florida uh, would be happy with once a week watering. We, we have maybe uh, four to six weeks a year where that's not really true, but for the rest of the year, uh, once a, a week is really pretty good. The, the uh, natural watering uh, takes care of, of a tremendous amount of the watering problems we have here in Florida. Uh, and, and overwatering is, is kind of a, a, a big problem. Overwatering tends to uh, produce uh, some plants that we don't want, pest plants. We get uh, dollar weed in the lawns. And, and if you see dollar weed, you can be pretty, got, uh, pretty sure that the, the person has been cheating and, and watering when they're not supposed to. We have an ordinance where you can only water uh, one day a week and, and the the ordinance is, is pretty good. It, if, if you follow the, the rules, you, you won't lose your lawn. If, if you uh, water constantly, like some of the people do, I mean, I, I, I've seen this happening. And then you, you go away that you can actually damage the lawn by reducing the, the water because it is, is so used to being watered that as soon as you cut back, uh, it goes into stress. So. Uh, mm -hmm. I would recommend you created a, 
you, you create a nightmare doing it. I would recommend that they follow uh, the uh, watering procedures that the water company has got on what to do about new lawns and on old lawns, water on your day like you're supposed to and uh, let God take care of the rest of it. And that is um, something I heard uh, University of Florida agents say, which really stuck in my mind. We do have it backwards. We think rain supplements our irrigation system. Somehow we've got that in our head. Oh good, it's raining. I don't need to irrigate as much. Irrigation systems were created to supplement natural rain. <laughs> we need to really think about this. And this week, no one needs to have their irrigation system on who is in Hernando County. Um, we do have a couple of questions. Um, are there microbes in potting soil? Not normally. The, you know, there depends on the source of the soil. Uh, a lot of times potting soil is intentionally sterilized. Um, if, if you were going to uh, raise plants uh, where you really wanted to uh, ensure the longevity of a plant, uh, adding microbes probably would be a good thing to do. And, and those are actually plant, plant growth microbes are available uh, at a lot of the, uh, the stores that supply uh, landscaping and uh, plant materials. Okay. You have anything to say, Bill? No, okay. ma'am. That, okay. that covers it very well. <laughs> okay. Uh, Debbie says, after hard rain, I have rows of brown piles. I have a story about that, too. <laughs> I, I put it on my Facebook page. I raked this up and put it in my garden as mulch. Did I mess up doing this? No, that's fine. Uh, the natural material. It's, it is like the... Um, my story is I pulled up in my driveway yesterday and saw this pretty significant size splotch of the corner of my eye. And I thought, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my husband's truck? <laughs> it's leaking oil like crazy. And it was that brown stuff, which is pretty much pollen, isn't it really? You know, that came out of the trees um, during the storms. And no, that, that'll, It'll add something. It'll put some organic material back in the ground, so it'll be fine. Um, when you were talking about compost, and I did put in the chat that, yes, the Hernando County Landfill is working on a compost program. Um, Carmen Bruno is the recycling coordinator who's in charge of that. I think they're a good two years, year and a half out still before that's going to be an available product for residents to come and get a truckload or some bags of it. Um, that's a cooperation between, it'll be the, uh, the um, yard waste and stuff that they get and um, some special supplies from Hernando County Utilities, similar to what uh, Bernie mentioned in Malorganite. And it will be a safe product because it'll, be, it'll fast compost, kill any pathogens. They, they have very specific rules. That's what's taking so long, is to make sure the EPA and there's a, all kind of agencies to make sure they're giving you a safe product. Um, but there are um, companies out there that where you can purchase compost. And we have found that that is a fantastic, if you're getting new sod, to put this compost product, there's a product called Command. It's about the only one out there that I know with one M. So find out if your lawn company will provide this command for you. We know at least a few of them do. And in a particular neighborhood here in Hernando County, we've had several homes that they applied this compost um, product before they laid the new sod. And they followed our watering um, variance rules for the 60 days to you know water in the new sod so they didn't have a terribly high <laughs> bill during that um, extra watering time and they're doing very well aren't they bill we're, we're keeping watch on them and yes the very last i heard their lawns still look beautiful it's working very well now eventually with our sandy soil which bernie pointed out to you you know as compared to the other um, particles We've got basketballs as compared to 
marbles or so I always tell people think of a jar of marbles or a you know big can of basketballs and then the air spaces that are left not much in a can of marbles basketballs you're going to have big air pockets that's what our sand is like it's very porous it's very leachy I don't know if that's a word but I make it up and um so therefore whatever we put on it it's going to work its way down very quickly. Dr. Lester always talks about that with vegetable gardens. You amend your soil for your vegetable garden up north, you've got it that way for five years. Here it's maybe a season. So it can last a little bit longer than that, but it's a, it's a, you're going to have to constantly be adding more organic matter. It will, it's, it's not a one and done, it will disappear and go away. And it's not just because it's seeping through, it's because those microbes that um, Bernie mentioned which look exactly like the pictures that he showed, by the way, that, that, was, a, that was an accurate <laughs> blown up picture. Um, unlike up north where we have permafrost and so all the microbes go to sleep in the winter, they never sleep here. They're constantly eating. I compare them to little Pac-Mans. They are rum, 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 <laughs> always doing their job. Therefore, that's why our soil reverts back to this um, Mayaka sand pretty quickly so putting that compost down helps. And then maybe after a few years, every so often what they call chop dressing, which just means sprinkling the compost back over top of your um, lawn helps a lot as well. And that is not counted as fertilizing, correct, Bill? Correct, that does not violate the uh, fertilizer ordinance. Yes, and it doesn't, provide many nutrients. What it does is improve the nutrient holding capacity of your soil. So that's a great way. Great. For now, um, find out if your company, you know, offers that product, if they can get it and look, look forward to when you can get it at the um, Hernando County landfill as well. Or I guess if you have enough compost around your own home, <laughs> you know, you can spread some of it. But we generally, the compost classes we teach are to be used um, in your flower beds, your vegetable garden, things like that. So are there any other questions? If not, um, we have about five minutes. Um, Karen, if you're able to pop in and let us know What's going on with mosquito control? There she is. There she was. See, told you she'd have a mosquito visit. <laughs> there we go. Okay. No, it's not going to let me stay. Um, I'll try to talk while the mute's not still while my mute button's staying. Okay, open. we can hear you. Uh, just a reminder that we had a lot of rain this weekend, so sure did. If your yards that is holding water, a tarp on the ground, a bucket. Uh, wheelbarrow, make sure you tip and toss that water in there because this is where the mosquitoes are really going to start to breed. We're in that spring season where water is becoming uh, abundantly easily for them to find. So if you could make sure you tip and toss anything in your yard and while you're doing your gardening and then be sure to give us a call if you need our assistance, if you just don't see where they're coming from, but they won't go away. Um, our guys will be more than happy to come Very out much. and inspect where they're coming from and do any needed treatments. All right. So, Thank you. And yep. I thought of you yesterday. Um, check your bird baths. That yeah. rain put a whole lot of leaves and there were wigglers in my bird bath. So I <laughs> dumped it all. And Karen, you'll be happy to know I now have a brush that lives near my bird bath so I can Perfect. brush the sides down and you know so dump your bird baths at least once a week yes so, and, and so with you know uh, springtime gardening you'll find you're going to have a lot more little uh, water collectors around with your garden as well the bases of your flower pots your watering can those kind of things um, so just be mindful that they're there and just make sure you dump them out whenever it rains your soil will be happy with the water. <laughs> so, all right. Well, if I think that is everything, thank you very much, Bernie. Um, you did a great job as usual. And Bernie is available. 
every Thursday at the County Extension Office. Bill, you want to put in the phone number? If you sure, I can go ahead and put it in the um the chat. It is 352-754-4433 for those who will be watching the recording of this. And um, give Bernie a call. He's there probably from eight till around 3.30. If nothing's happening around 3.30, he'll, he'll go ahead and go home. So keep him occupied. Um, he knows a whole lot of stuff, not just about soil, uh, citrus, uh, lawns. He'll love to talk about your lawns all day long. And, um, you know, all, all sorts of any question that you have here in Hernando County. Can you put your address in, um, Dr. Lister? Sure. That one I get messed up. I know there's ones and sixes and <laughs> so, so that I, I'm, they are accepting people in the office now. So um, they can be available to talk to you. There you go, 16110 Aviation Loop Drive in Brooksville. That's the name of the street. It really looks like an access road off of Spring Hill Drive. When you're looking for it, if you're familiar with the post office on Spring Hill Drive, um, right at California Street and Spring Hill Drive, they're right next door, right to the west. And um, Thursday's a great day to go and, and visit Bernie. Also, Dr. Lester and I will continue having virtual plant clinics for those who can't make it in the, to the office or, um, you know, um, on Thursdays at from about 10 to 11. So if you have questions, we get people from all over the state <laughs> I'm watching those as well. So bring your questions and, oh, that's not tomorrow because this is Tuesday. So we'll see you. Correct, that's Thursday. Thursday at 10. I'm used to Wednesday classes. <laughs> okay, everyone, thank you very much. And um, we will see you next Tuesday, our next class in this rotted, recycled and resurrected series will be by Dr. Lester. It'll be the fungus among us. Bernie touched on fungus in our soil and Dr. Lester is going to talk about the job of fungus and how, you know, as it breaks down, new life, it comes out of, you know, the fungus and the jobs that it does for us. All right, thank you everybody and have a great week. Okay, great, thank you.